All right, guys, I was able to push my Alder Lake overclock results even further this time around. And now I want to take another deep dive and take a look at the micro architecture to see how much of a difference we get between the stock and overclocked Alder Lake processor. I would also like to add that I have started a Discord server and you guys are invited. All right, this time around, I have pushed my P cores up to 5.2 gigahertz and my E cores up to 4.2 gigahertz. The CPU ring is still at four gigahertz and my DDR5 RAM is still at 5,600 megahertz. All right, let's take a look at the DRAM latency and the DRAM bandwidth. I will be comparing the stock and overclock settings while showing all of my results thus far. Starting with the DRAM bandwidth, I have increased my bandwidth from 75.7 gigabytes to 89.5 gigabytes, which is an 18% increase. The small data sets of DRAM latency shows a latency decrease from the stock 66.43 nanoseconds to 52.65 nanoseconds. This is a 25% difference in latency. And remember, when it comes to latency, lower is better. The large data set shows a decrease of 12.68 nanoseconds. This makes the stock results 20% slower than my overclock results. I have combined the average of all the P cores and E cores in their respective columns instead of listing each core individually. The performance core shows a decrease of 18% when compared to the stock settings. The efficient core shows a decrease of 15%. Now that we have seen how quickly the 12th generation Intel processor can access and retire data, we can now begin to see how those latency decreases apply to actual workloads and benchmarks. This chart shows all of the P and E cores working together on various workloads. I have increased my overall performance by 67 gigabytes a second, pushing my previous results of 713 gigabytes per second up to 780 gigabytes per second. That represents an 8% increase in performance. And while 8% might not seem like a lot to most people, here we can see that it translates to 67 gigabytes a second. Now we will just focus solely on the eight performance cores. We see an increase of 40 gigabytes a second. I was able to increase my performance by 8.3%. And when working together, all performance cores were capable of moving 526.49 gigabytes a second. Now we will turn our attention to the overclocked efficient cores. With all eight efficient cores working together, I have increased my results by 11%. This is an additional 19.2 gigabytes per second. My overclock results show that both clusters now perform the same. Cluster number one, which consists of four efficient cores, performance increased by nine gigabytes. Cluster number two performance increased by 12 gigabytes. So cluster number two received the most significant performance increase since it now matches cluster one. They both can move 164 gigabytes a second. Now I will take my best performance core and my best efficient core and we will see their top performance. Starting with my best performance core, I have increased my results by 53 gigabytes a second, pushing my overall bandwidth up to 813 gigabytes per core. My absolute best case scenario was 1.1 terabytes. Now we will take a look at the best Gracemont core, also known as the efficient core. The performance has increased by 17 gigabytes per second. My overall benchmark averaged 300 gigabytes per second. My best case scenario for a single overclock Gracemont core is 480 gigabytes a second compared to only 407 gigabytes a second for the stock results. That is an additional 73 gigabytes or 18% increase. This chart shows all eight performance cores separate from the eight efficient cores. This is a low level test that will show the actual max performance for the cores working on various workloads. Starting with the eight overclock performance cores, we see that I have increased my performance to 3.4 terabytes, up from 3.2 terabytes. The actual increase is 239 more gigabytes. Now on the lower half of the chart, we will focus on the eight overclock deficient cores. I have increased my performance for an average of 2.86 terabytes. That is up from 2.4 terabytes. So the actual increase is 435 more gigabytes per second. As usual, I suggest that you guys go to the article for more information. I go into more details about the test and about the absolute best performance. So just click on the link below this video and it will take you directly to the article and you can get more information.
in Seambench R23 multi-thread results, we see that when compared to the stock i9 12 900K, there is a 9% increase. The Seambench R23 score adds an additional 2,525 points for a total of 30,259. The overclocked i9 12 900K is also nearly 9% faster than the stock AMD Ryzen 5950X. I managed to beat the reference AMD Threadripper 2990WX by 205 points. The Threadripper 2990WX is a 32 core 64 thread CPU. It has double the cores and 40 more threads than the i9 12900K. The Threadripper is currently retailing on Amazon for $1,878. Amazon is selling the i9 12900K for around $620. This makes the Threadripper 2990WX 200% more expensive than Alder Lake. In the single thread test, Seambench R23 shows that I have increased my score from 1,954 to 2,064, which is a 6% increase. The overclocked 12900K shows a 28% increase over the stock Ryzen 9 5950X. 7-Zip shows that I have increased my compression results by 25%. The decompression result shows an 18% increase. The total ratings results have increased by 21%. In CPU-Z, we see that the overclocked i9-12900K takes a commanding 32% lead over the reference AMD Ryzen 5950X. The overclock 12900K also beats the reference 3950X by 61%. Compared to my stock settings, the overclocked 12900K is 5% faster. However, the stock 12900K beats the 5950X by 26% and it beats the 3950X by 54%. In the CPU-Z multi-thread benchmark, my overclocked i9-12900K managed to beat the reference 5950X by 573 points which is a 5% increase over the 5950X. The 5950X has eight more threads than the i9-12900K, so this was a nice achievement to hit. My overclock 12900K beats my stock 12900K by 10%. Here's a list of all of my Y-Cruncher results. The latest results are on the far right and highlighted in red. In right cruncher I managed to decrease my stock results by 3.256 seconds. The stock results are 14% higher than the overclock results. This comes out to roughly a 12% performance increase for the overclocked i9-12900K. In Corona 1.3, I was able to calculate 1,382,900 more rays in the 16 presets. I was able to accomplish this 8 seconds quicker than the stock i9-12900K. This benchmark shows a 16% performance increase. Now let's take a look at the power consumption charts. In the article, I go into more detail about MCE or multi-core enhancements, so please be sure to check the article for more information. Here are the gaming power consumption results in Firestrike Extreme and Shadow of the Tomb Raider with the highest preset. The Golden Cove and Grace Monk cores definitely received some nice increases with the overclocks. When all performance and all efficient cores are working together, we saw up to 780 gigabytes a second. Alder Lake is capable of some serious workloads, and I will echo what I said in my very first Alder Lake review. If Intel and Microsoft can ensure that certain workloads stay within their respective clusters, we can see some amazing performance gains from the efficient cores. The efficient cores can also access DRAM much quicker than the performance cores, which makes them great for reading multiple lines of data. Shadow of the Tomb Raider shows 550 watts when running the built-in benchmark, which shows different areas of the game. I decided to use 1440p in the highest preset since it can stress both the CPU and the GPU. When comparing Intel's Core i9-12900K to AMD's latest and greatest, the AMD Ryzen 5950X and previously highly threaded thread rippers, Intel effectively became the best price for performance. In CPU-Z, the i9-12900K is 32% faster than the reference AMD Ryzen 5950X in the single threaded test. Intel manages to match AMD's thread rippers that can reach nearly $2,000, but Intel does this at a much lower price point that is currently only $610.
So with all of that being said, Intel has done a solid job with their Tref Gen Alder Lake processor. The Z690 platform appears to have plenty of bandwidth to accommodate the power for Golden Cores and Gracemont Cores. Please check the article in the link below this video for my full review that contains more information. And feel free to join my Discord server link below this video as well. If you enjoy my content, please hit the thumbs up button, share this video, and consider donating to my Patreon or PayPal. Thank you.